Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have for you my Halloween version of a Pinterest nail it or fail it Dollar Tree edition. So all the all the materials, most of the materials, are Dollar Tree, and we are going to make a sign for our front porch that I found on Pinterest and I wanted to recreate Dollar Tree style. So I'm going to give you a list of materials, and then I will kind of talk you through what we're going to do with each of the supplies. So first things first, and if you saw, oh, I don't know if it's going to be on the thumbnail, but we're making um, a Hocus Pocus sign. So you're going to need, oops, um, to make one sign, you need three of these beware signs. Any color because I'm painting on the back. Um, so I just grabbed, I bought six, but you'll need three of the beware signs. You're going, to, I got all the materials here next to me. You're going to need some. There's a lot of glitter on that. Foam core board, I've already cut mine, but you'll need some foam core board from the Dollar Tree. You know, like rulers. Um, I got this at the Dollar Tree and it's wood filler and it works really well, I'll show you in a second. Um, oh, I got glitter in my eyeball now. A putty knife, which they do sell at the Dollar Tree. Um, some craft sticks. Again, I've got glitter in my eyeballs. They sell these at the Dollar Tree. Some sandpaper. Dollar Tree. Um, now I have been seeing online that some of your Dollar Trees are selling X-Acto knives. So you'll need a straight edge. Some paint brushes. All kinds of paint. A pencil and then I got these paint pens at the Dollar Tree I had the black one but I know they have them in different colors I didn't see black at mine or I would have bought it but I did get the white and the gold and I'm in love and I may buy um, some more of the white but we'll see if I can find them a pencil and then paint colors I'm using black orange I have some green and copper, some silver, some red, purple, and I'm using all the different colors because I want to blend together to make the dresses and the hair. Um, because I don't want mine flat. If you want just, you know, really rustic, just do flat. If not, I'm kind of zhuzhing mine up a little bit. So I'm using all, all the things. Um, you'll want you know, some rags around. You'll need some twine. You'll need some hot glue. So what I did to start off with is I took this putty knife and I scraped all the glitter off of these. But you can still see it, but it, there's the glitter's not all coming off. Plus, I feel like the glitter impedes gluing, and these are going to need to be glued together. Then at the top... From the back side, I put the wood filler in. And this stuff dries really quick, like an hour. So I put the wood filler in the holes and sanded them down. And I also sanded down the back just to get rid of any of the other, you know, loose glitter. You don't have to do this to the back. Um, but I'm gifting one of these. So my plan is to, after they're glued together, I'm going to paint the backs with black spray paint just to so it looks a little more nice you don't have to though but these are gonna lean on my front porch and I thought if I'm gonna gift this to somebody let me go ahead and put it all together and spray paint it with some just cheap 97 cents from Walmart um, spray paint I have these I get these at the Dollar Tree and I don't care if they get ruined and painted on and dirty like that so you want your spatula. Now what I did, my prep ahead, which is going to help you, is I did all the scraping, all the sanding, all of the hole filling. And again, you don't have to fill your holes. I wanted to, and I had the supply, so I did that. And then kind of let it all dry, because I took a um, handy wipe, and I just wiped 
all of the glitter off. I got lint everywhere now too. I wiped all the glitter off and I sanded and wiped all that off. So everybody is smooth and clean. And that's where we're going to start the tutorial is everybody is prepped all the, and I mean everybody, but all of the signs have been prepped. Check the backs of your signs too when you're buying them. Some of them had a lot of black paint on it. I don't, it's okay. I have some on a few of mine, but um, if you don't want to deal with it, then just check the backs of your signs like that. So that is where we're at. Everybody, all the signs have been prepped and are ready to paint. Um, I will tell you, I've already painted some of the signs just to see how the process is going to work out for us. I'm only going to paint one of the sisters on this video and then I will show you how I bring it all together. Um, but for time's sake, I'm just going to do that. But I will um, forewarn you that you really want to let your paints dry fully before you start. So it, I painted them last night the base colors, and then I came in this morning and touched them up. So just a heads up, but that's where we're going to start. And I hope you enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Okay, we are going to draw Winifred on the beware sign. So all the glitter has been scratched off. The holes have been filled in. And I have measured out. I just paint, I just drew a straight line right here. It doesn't matter where you do it. And what I would recommend is having a um, picture of it open on your phone or print it out so you can kind of see. This is very rudimentary drawings. Now what I'm going to do on Winifred is she has a open neck on her collar. So I know three is halfway, so we'll just pencil this. And the beauty of this is pencil marks, you can paint right over them. So we're just going to, and you can also erase them on this material, and I'll show you in a second how I'm going to do that. But I'm just drawing really a rectangle out here, and then we just kind of want to draw a collar for her shirt. Um, generally, and I'm, again, we're just eyeballing this. Just want to give her a little collar. And then I'll show you a close-up. But you're also going to see it when I paint it. There we go. And then I'll show you when I erase it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you to see my pencil marks, but you'll definitely see. Oh, here we go. Maybe there. So that's the front of her collar. And I want this to go a little deeper, just a little bit, nothing too dramatic. Um, there we go. Because this is all going to be open. And then I will take some, my eraser, and I will tell you, these Pentels work the best. And I get them at the Dollar Tree. I don't need everything completely erased, but it does help. So this is just the neck of her shirt right here. This will be where the faux face is. And then her hair, ooh, her hair is just a, um, cut paint everywhere. It's just like a, a top of a heart here and a top of a heart here. And again, I'll show you when I paint what it's going to look like. So we're going to start down to here with her dress. She's wearing a green dress. And this is just some craft paint, nothing specific. This is not even chalk paint. It's just acrylic. Um, I like to mix my colors a little bit, but um, this one I didn't need to. I'm going to add some highlights to it in a minute. But So I'm going to show you here. We're just going to paint her dress. I have found that painting the base colors first before the hair just helps the hair to be a little more fluid instead of trying to paint around flourishes and swishes. All right, so I'm going to paint this and then I'll be, um, I'll probably just fast forward it for it. So there's the orange base of her hair, and I 
can always touch it up, try to get a little more of a point down at the middle. But do you see how difficult this would be to paint the white over it for or the flesh color? And then the last color I'm going to put in her hair right this second is some copper. And I'm just doing these like swirls. Nothing of any pattern. It's just color that I'm dropping into the hair. Anywhere and everywhere. I like the copper. It's a little shinier. It kind of doesn't really necessarily blend with the brown. And then once this is dry, and I'll show you, I'll come back in with a white paint pen and give it a little more highlight. But for right now, that's her hair. And all I need to do is I'm going to put all this paint away because the last steps are with the paint pens. But this is what she looks like right now. And we'll dry her and then we're going to highlight down here and we're going to fix everybody up. But this has to completely dry. So give me a minute. While the background, the piece of wood is drying or the beware sign actually is drying, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the sign that's going to say I smell children to go across the front. This is just foam core board from the Dollar Tree that I cut. This is um, oops. three inches wide by about 16 inches long. I just took it and laid it across the three signs together and that was my measurement for the sign um, because I wanted to go straight across. I painted it black. Um, what I used is a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and it cuts. I'm, I'm using a um, quilter's board to cut on because it you know won't scratch up my table. And then now be a careful, but it does bend a little bit when it gets wet if you use really wet paint, but it's not so hard that it won't glue down when I'm ready. It just has a curve to it. So I painted this and I let it dry and this is what the sign is going to look like and I used the Dollar Tree paint pen. I did go to the Dollar Tree today and I found this pen in black so I grabbed two of them and I have a lot of questions on where I'm finding these. Um, it's in that new craft section that some of the stores are getting. These were actually hanging on a hook in this craft section with the new Crafter Square I believe it's called and then I just used some black paint this stuff is like 60 cents at Walmart and I'll show you how well this writes I'm gonna freehand this guys because I didn't like what it looked like when I did the pencil and there we go so I have my two my two because I'm actually making two signs one for a friend and one for me now when a friend's all dry her hair, the little bit of fence up here, and her dress. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take the lids off my pens here, is we're going to do some highlighting just to kind of give it a little dimension. Um, do some collar work around here. And honestly, I'm just taking a paint pen and I'm being super not fussy here. Right, because again, this is rustic, primitive even, really. I mean, the dolls with the no faces. And then we're gonna go this way. I mean, that is it. This is all we do to make it look primitive. I like some gold in there just because. Ooh, I need to get the gold flow in here again. I had it on the pumpkin sign. There we go. And we're going to just do that. And that just gives her dress somewhere to go. Now, I don't need any black in her hair, but I do want some white curls and some gold. Not really necessarily curls, but just kind of, I don't even know what you would call these. Zhuzhs? We'll call them zhuzhs. And again, I'm just trying to give her hair kind of somewhere to go. And more dimension. 
than just flat, if that makes sense. So now Winifred's done and this paint takes no time to dry, which is the beauty of this paint. And so I'll show you, she goes in the middle on either side of her sisters. And then that gets glued to the bottom. Is that not awesome or what? So what I wanna do is put some paper down to protect my surface. I'm gonna flip these over and we're gonna get the glue going. First step is I'm gonna take some of this Fix All and I'm going to put it down the back. Just straight down the line to hold these together. I don't want to get it too much in between the layers um, because I don't want it to squish out the front, but I definitely want to be able to get it down in there a little bit. So I squished it out there and then I'm going to take a popsicle stick and just like almost like frosting it down in here. So it goes down in the middle. Um, yeah, just like frosting a cake or cupcakes. Just kind of smoosh it down in between the layers. And then the next step, because you really want this to kind of hold together, hot glue on either side of some popsicle sticks. And for right now, I'm just going to push these two together and hold them down and let that dry. And I'm gonna do this all the way up the back. And then like once this is completely dry, say tomorrow, I should come back in with um, the hot glue. But I wanna push them together. So I'm pushing on either one of these and I'm holding this in place. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna hold these two boards together. And then we'll do it on the other boards as well. Remember, I'm making two of these, uh, one's for a friend. Plus, it's easier for me to make two at a time for video purposes. But this one should dry pretty fast. I did not put a lot of the Fix-All in there. Um, oops, we need some more glue sticks. But I did put enough that it will dry pretty quickly, but it should hold them together. And if I find that it's not holding them together, I can always go back and glue more. Now, this is going to go on a covered porch or inside. You probably don't want to put this out in the elements unless you decide you're going to seal it up like really, really well. Um, oh, I just want to come up here. And attach it here and then I'll do one more at the top so you really want these attached pretty well together um, because the last step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do hot glue I have enough here yep I'm gonna go hot glue like pretty thick down this on top of where I put that fix all. If you try to glue it between the two layers, what's going to happen is it's going to squish out the front. Now watch, just come up here and I'm going to attach this way because that's already dry enough. See how I'm doing that? So I will finish up this little bit here. Let it dry. Oops. And then um, I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm putting the front on. But all I'm doing, honestly, on the back here is just gluing it down. Using the popsicle sticks to secure everything into place so it stays nice and firmly all the way to the top and the bottom. I'll be back. Okay, here's the finished product with my bonus 
Thanks, sign. I am in love with how this turned out. I'm trying to get a really good view for you. There you go. It's on my front porch. And I am loving it. And I hope you enjoyed my Pinterest Dollar Tree edition, Nail It or Fail It. And I hope I nailed it. You guys have a good one, and I will talk to you later. Bye.